Most of Arizona gets its drinking water from underground aquifers or rivers. A lack of snowmelt or rain can threaten those supplies. To solve a problem that communities around the world face, researchers and companies in Arizona are working to find new ways to make drinking water, sometimes out of thin air. Andrea Achille is a professor at the University of Arizona's West Center, a research site off I-10 focused on water and wastewater treatment technologies. He says the work being done there to find new sources of potable water is fundamental because the future where we have less water, it's already here. I think the, the, the southwest part of the United States is pretty much out of, uh, out of riparian habitats, out of natural waters. So if you see in California, for example, they're looking for seawater diesel as well as potable water reuse. Here inland as well, we are looking for potable water reuse. And one great opportunity is to use the wastewater. Achilles says people's attitudes are changing quickly about using reclaimed water, which he says got the rather unfortunate and inaccurate nickname toilet to tap. Toilet to tap is a term that should not be used because is exactly what we want to avoid, you know, from the toilet to the tap. We are treating the water very, very well. And uh, technology-wise, I think there is no reason to not drink uh, reclaimed water. His research focuses on improving technologies for treating reclaimed water and desalinating seawater, two technologies already in use around the world. And he says he sees a lot of promise in other technologies as well. We could perhaps use uh, uh, water from the atmosphere, one company that's developed that technology is based here in Arizona. We went to the Scottsdale headquarters of Zero Mass Water, which went to market with its source panels last year. So this is a, a source hydro panel. It's using solar thermal and solar PV to extract the water vapor in the air into a very adsorbent material. So right below this top panel is where we're converting that water vapor into liquid water. And so what you get, end up with is very pure water like distilled. So in our reservoir, in every panel, there's 30 liters of storage. We are storing water and mineralizing it with magnesium and calcium. That water is very simply delivered right to a tap. We can just put the, the little tube right through the walls, no interaction with existing plumbing, and it goes right to a dispenser, like here, straight from the panel. She says CEO Cody Friesen, a professor at Arizona State University, wanted to solve one big problem. All of us in some way experience water stress. So some, for some people, it's as inconvenient of, as having to go buy bottled water from a grocery store. For the rest of us, it can be you know, very life altering. So people who struggle during droughts, people who are facing water contamination and all sorts of access issues exist all over the world. In working to improve access, one goal at Zero Mass Water was to not use any existing infrastructure. So instead, they look to the sun. So with solar, we're able to completely reduce the CO2 footprint of purifying drinking water and at the same time make it something that people can have all over the world. Researcher Andrea Achille says making water out of air is energy intensive, so it works best where there's a lot of sun, but that creates other limitations. It happens that, uh, especially in the United States, we need water where um, the arid southwest, where we need water, there is not that much water in the atmosphere. So the humidity is pretty low. So in that case, we need more energy to harvest that, uh, that water. So that's a limitation. But we do have a lot of sun, which is good for the process. Of course, humidity plays a, a role, but the access to sun that we have and the uh, advanced efficiency of the technology makes it so that even in here, the arid Arizona desert, we are still making uh, drinking water. Zero Mass Water has been around since 2014, and they've grown quickly, operating now in five continents and 12 countries. Fitzgerald says they're working with aid organizations like USAID to install panels at places that need them around the world, including at refugee camps in Lebanon. And since late last year, the hydro panels have been on sale in the U.S. Every panel is $2,000, with about an estimated $500 installation cost. Every hydro panel makes an average of three to five liters of water per day. So we start our standard array at two hydro panels. That's about a case of water per day. 
The company is targeting customers all over who drink bottled water. Bottled water being the most wasteful and potentially harmful of all drinking water that you could choose. And so, you know, if you're buying drinking water through bottled water for your family, it's going to pay back in about two to three years. And it's a really great alternative option without any of the carbon footprint, any of the water footprint it takes to get that to you. The UVA's Andrea Kili says zero mass water is one early example of how our water sources will look quite different in the future than they do today. There is potential for tailored, what we call a tailored um, water for fit for purpose water. So we will treat the water to be safe, not necessarily potable. Uh, it will be cheaper and then we treat a little bit to very high quality standard to be drinkable. He says that future is still a way off, though, and it's not just a question of technology. So the paradigm now is like uh, there is a centralized water treatment facility. We distribute the water to the houses. It's just one source, and then uh, the wastewater goes away. So it can be that we have uh, basically de decentralized and more local uh, um, treatments that will allow different sources at the house. So it's going to take some time.